We're tracking high winds and showers moving across Kentucky later on tonight. Maybe, just maybe a few flakes. I'll have the latest on that for you. Travelers at Bluegrass Airport suddenly found themselves in the dark this afternoon because of a major power outage in Lexington. And how friends and family are remembering a woman killed in a shooting at a central Kentucky apartment complex. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 6. Good evening. Gusty winds and heavy rain causing some major problems on this Christmas Eve. At one point, thousands of people in Lexington lost power. Even Bluegrass Airport went dark as strong winds blew through, affecting travelers there. More on the power outages in just a moment, but we begin tonight with meteorologist Jim Caldwell. He shows us what he's tracking right now on the First Alert Defender, Jim. And it's a pretty active Christmas Eve out there, not a white one. We're talking about more of a spring like system with some of those showers and very gusty winds moving through the area where they continue to cause some very, very strong wind gusts, especially out in eastern Kentucky. Let's check it out on Defender right now for you. One of the strongest gusts I've seen so far comes to us from around Vanceburg up in Lewis County. And that was at 61 miles per hour. Others uh, coming in 50 plus all over the place, especially out in eastern Kentucky. So those showers continue, and the winds will also be an issue for a little while longer, especially in this uh, corridor here and here in Lexington as well. They'll eventually start to subside as we get into the overnight. Looking toward Frenchburg, up toward Moorhead, the rain and gusty winds will continue for a little while longer. Wind advisory will run through 9 o'clock. I highly suspect we'll see some wind. Beyond that, of course, but we'll get below the threshold to spark the advisory coming up past nine. We'll still see 20, 25 miles per hour. Certainly, here are the current wind gusts out there now. We're still at 24 here in Lexington. We're on the back end of some of the stronger stuff. Look out toward Prestonsburg there in eastern Kentucky coming in with that 36 mile per hour speed. I just got this a few minutes ago from some of the high winds. This was out in Fleming County and uh, got multiple pictures from uh, the Twitter user Jin Jin41039. And there you see a tree crashing on this truck and we had another one uh, from southern Kentucky around London a very similar scene so a lot of wind out there causing more issues throughout central and eastern Kentucky we'll have the very latest track on all of it coming up for you in just a few minutes all right thank you Jim and keep those pictures coming on that kind of uh, situation out there it's not what holiday travelers of course wanted to see today as we mentioned earlier the power went out at Bluegrass Airport this afternoon and that delayed many travelers trying to catch flights on this Christmas Eve Jerrica Insko talked to some of them she joins us from Bluegrass Airport with an update Christmas Eve is kind of bad timing for a power outage here at Bluegrass Airport but as you can see the lights are back on but that wasn't the case a couple hours ago Airport officials could only confirm for us that the power was out, but as for why, they didn't say. But we reached out to flyers, patiently waiting for their holiday flights in the dark. Even with a couple flight delays and a canceled flight to Chicago, people seemed to remain in the Christmas spirit. We walked in moments before the lights came back on in the terminal, and there were cheers from those still in line. Without power, Bluegrass Airport couldn't function for about an hour. But now this area has cleared out as people caught their flights. I heard a few people kind of like trying to negotiate with the airline, like, can I get to Chicago? Can I get to et cetera? But uh, nothing, no, no yelling, no screaming. Everyone was fairly orderly. <laughs> We do know of other power outages throughout the city due to weather, but we haven't confirmed yet whether this power outage is connected to those. At Bluegrass Airport, Jerrica Insko, WKYT. The winds also causing travel troubles for people on the roads. At one point, about 12,000 KU customers were in the dark in Lexington, most of them in the Versailles Road area. Many traffic lights were knocked out as well. But it's looking a lot better right now. Garrett Weimer shows us how drivers handle the strong winds and all those power outages. It's a busy day and evening for travel, and drivers out here have another headache to deal with, not just other drivers. It's the strong wind. The gas prices are cooperating, but it's the weather that's making this year's holiday travel more difficult. Strong winds and wet roads are slowing down drivers. Now, Kentucky Utilities spokesperson tells us the winds knocked out power from Rupp Arena down Versailles Road past the airport. Police directed traffic at Versailles and Man of War and several other intersections in the area. Across the street, strong winds even knocked down a line blocking the entrance to Keeneland. It's conditions like these that make drivers have to pay even more attention behind the wheel. Well, 
truck's been a rocking, you know, from the wind blowing everything, but, uh, and gust the winds, and it's been a pretty good ride, except for the, you know, the weather being windy and all that. Yeah, an important thing to keep in mind when it is this windy, and especially in combination with the wet roads and the rain coming down, experts say it's important to keep both hands on the wheel when you're driving. In Lexington, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. Kentucky Utilities tells us that power was restored to everyone who lost it by 5 this afternoon. They say the wind blew a ground wire into a main line, and that triggered the outage along Versailles Road. Gusty winds causing some damage in southern Kentucky this afternoon. We received this eyewitness picture from London showing a tree knocked down by winds there. If you have eyewitness pictures, we would like to see them. Just look for the eyewitness section on WKYT.com or share your pictures on our Facebook page or through Twitter. Tonight, we're learning more about a shooting that killed one young person and injured three others at a Winchester apartment complex. Police say the young woman killed was hit by a stray bullet that flew into her apartment. Winchester police have arrested these two people in connection to the shooting. They charged Lamont Wilkerson with murder and burglary and Lillian Barnett with complicity to murder. Sam Smith begins our team coverage with the latest on the investigation. Lamont Wilkerson was escorted from the Winchester Police Department to the Clark County Detention Center this morning. He's charged with robbery and murder, and according to his arrest citation, he admitted to his part in last night's shooting at the apartment complex. Police say this was a targeted home invasion. We're told Wilkerson and two other men were driven to and from the apartment complex by Lillian Barnett. She's charged with complicity to murder. Police say Wilkerson and the two other men forced their way inside the apartment. A gunfight broke out and a bullet went through the floor and killed the woman living below. We responded and uh, we were able to close this case uh, quickly and get to hopefully get some justice for the victim. Three other people were shot last night. Police say they're listed in critical condition. They're also looking for a person of interest. They say this man is not from Winchester and they're working with other police agencies to find him. Police say what happened last night is not typical for the town. We've been trained and we, we know how to handle these type of investigations. Uh, surely we don't deal with them on a regular basis uh, like some other cities. In Winchester, Sam Smith, WKYT. Now, Winchester police say that 19-year-old Amber Cottle was not even in the apartment where the shots were fired, but they say she was hit and killed by a bullet that came through the ceiling. Cottle's boyfriend says he was with her during that shooting last night. Miranda Combs talked to him today, and she continues our team coverage with how Cottle is being remembered. She was 19 in college and living with her boyfriend and her boyfriend's mother in this middle floor apartment in Winchester. She was a great person. I mean, wouldn't hurt a soul. Keeley Townsend has known Amber Cottle for years and knew the love she had for her boyfriend, David Arbick. Arbit says he and Cottle were watching TV in their apartment last night, like normal. Amber Cottle's boyfriend says fighting in the apartment above them was not uncommon, but they would have never predicted what happened last night. We started hearing gunshots. They started shooting up the place. And uh, what'd you do? Uh, we we panicked. I mean, we, we we were trying to take cover, head to the back room, and before before we even was able to get up, you know, she was she was shot. A bullet from upstairs came through the ceiling and hit Cottle, killing her. We thought she fell and she might have hurt herself. And then uh, when I uh, when I came back to look at her, she was uh, there. The blood just kept forming. So and they were in their own home, minding their own business, and neither one of them would have deserved anything like this. Arbic says the two had a lifetime of plans made. Now, as life goes on in this apartment complex, one life is missing. I've been, I've been, with, her, I've been with her every day for the last 30, 30 and a half years. In Winchester, Miranda Combs, WKYT. Uh, the Clark County coroner says he's still waiting for Cottle's autopsy results. We're told that Hearn Funeral Home in Stanton is planning her funeral. University of Kentucky police have issued a crime bulletin because of a robbery near campus. Police say a woman was robbed early Saturday morning near the intersection of Jersey and Pine Streets. Police say that she had just left a business and was followed by four people. They say one of those people stole her iPhone while the others pushed her and hit her. The victim was not injured. Police say the suspects are two men and two women. Police say the victim is not a UK student. 
A strange arrest in southern Kentucky. Police say they stopped an intoxicated driver as she was taking a corpse to a funeral home. Corbin police arrested 36-year-old Leslie Gambrell. She's been charged with DUI and reckless driving. According to the Corbin News Journal, Corbin police say they pulled her over for driving about 30 miles an hour on Interstate 75. Police say someone from the funeral home picked up the vehicle after Gambrell's arrest and took the body on to the funeral home. A delay tonight in a central Kentucky school district's efforts to set up some temporary classrooms after a fire. We'll have an update next. And then a Christmas gift for Lexington drivers. Gas prices have reached another milestone as they keep falling. Some temporary preschool classrooms in Lincoln County will not be ready to go after the holiday break. A fire at the Lincoln County Board of Education last summer destroyed the classrooms. School leaders wanted to use mobile units as temporary classrooms, and they hoped those would be ready by January 6th. But the Interior Journal reports the school district is still working to install the mobile units. So teachers will not be able to begin moving into them over the holiday break as was planned. School leaders are not sure when the classrooms might be ready. If you still haven't finished your Christmas shopping, you're running out of time and options. Most stores have already closed on this Christmas Eve, and they'll be closed Christmas Day. Fayette Mall closed just minutes ago, as did Kohl's and Best Buy. Fayette Mall actually opened at 6 this morning. You'll still find a few stores open tonight. Walmart will be open until 8, and Toys R Us until 9 o'clock. Target and Kmart will be open tonight until 10 o'clock. Just in time for Christmas, drivers in Lexington can now fill up their cars for less than $2 a gallon. We found that many gas stations around the city selling a gallon of regular for $1.99 today, and a few stations are selling it for even less than that. Other Kentucky cities reached that mark a few weeks ago, but this is the first time in years that gas has been below $2 a gallon in Lexington. Drivers told us they couldn't be happier. This is a wonderful Christmas present to get gas below $2. Yeah, it's wonderful, right? Who thought this would happen? Well, this time last year, the average price for a gallon of gas, $3.31 in Lexington. Remember, you can find the cheapest gas prices where you live by simply going to WKYT.com.